This video will discuss determinants. So let's start by looking at a matrix A. So I have two underlines there indicating that I've got a matrix, which is a two-dimensional array of values. So I'm going to assume I have an n by n matrix. I have n rows and I have n columns. So we're going to define something here called the determinant of matrix A, which is sometimes indicated by kind of the two vertical bars, which usually indicate magnitude, absolute value, something like that. Okay, so we have in the matrix, which is n by n here, uh, any, any case where i equals j for the elements here, where we have a11, a22, a33, all the way to ann. Those are what are called diagonal elements of the matrix. You're going down the diagonal of matrix A. So the determinant of matrix A is equal to a sum from i equals 1 to n factorial. Remember, n factorial being a function where you multiply by every integer all the way down to 1. So 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 will be 120. So this is a very, very quickly increasing function. It's increasing exponentially quickly. So we have negative 1 to the i plus 1. So this is flipping signs every time we increase i. So it goes from positive, negative, positive, negative, etc. all the way as we go. And then what we have is we take what's called this permutation operator. So we're going to be kind of exchanging, you could either view it as exchanging rows or exchanging columns of this matrix as we go. But the thing that we're, that we're operating on is we have a product as we go of all of the diagonal elements of this matrix. So I'm going to take this pi symbol here is, is all of these elements, multiply them together, just like the sigma, the big sum symbol, is take all these elements and add them together. So this pi, this product operator, we're going to take a11 times a22 all the way down to times ann, multiply all those together, and then do that when we've exchanged uh, column 2 and column 1. Then do that again when we've exchanged column 1 and column 3. And then do that for every possible exchanging pair of every possible column set in the matrix. So there are going to be n factorial different permutations of us exchanging these columns or rows of this matrix. So each term in that is going to have n products because there are n diagonal elements in this n by n matrix. And there are n factorial total terms, so n factorial uh, values where we're going to sum together these n products. So what does this look like for an actual matrix? So if we have a one by one matrix, and which is a single element, it's pretty simple. It's just that element. If we want a two by two matrix, you might be familiar with a two by two determinant. That's a11 times a22, the diagonal product minus a12 times a21. Because if we exchange column one and column two, now a12 and a21 are the diagonal, and we've done this uh, negative one here as we went. So we did an odd number of exchanges to get there, so we get a negative sign, and we did an even number of exchanges, zero exchanges, to get this ordering, so we have a positive sign, a11, a22, minus a12, a21. All right, so we can see that this is going to start getting complicated very quickly once we go to a 3x3 three three matrix. So there's six different combinations, three factorial ways to arrange this diagonal in terms of permuting or exchanging these columns. And each term is going to have three, uh, is going to have three values that we're multiplying together. So these six different combinations, whether you do an even or an odd number of exchanges gives you the plus or minus sign, and all possible diagonals are observed there. You can also do this, um, <clears throat> I believe this is called uh, cofactor expansion, if I'm not uh, mistaken there, where you can expand this as a bunch of uh, two by two determinants times something. So when, you're, when you have no idea how to move forward, you can kind of break these down into some smaller determinants as you go. 
So for by four time by a four by four matrix, I'm gonna have 24 terms, and that's already intractable. There's too much work for me to show to do it by hand uh, on a single slide. So that's why we very quickly move to these formulas for doing things when we're going to be usually putting them into a computer and allowing some uh, computational procedure to, to handle working with these big, big matrices that we have to deal with often in quantum mechanics. Okay, so some interesting properties of determinants. The determinant of a product, or uh, the determinant of multiplying two matrices together, the product of A and B is the determinant of A times the determinant of B because all of these are scalar values. So by the time you do all the multiplications and additions, you do get a single number. And that number is sort of like an effective magnitude of the matrix, sort of, sort of not, but we can think of it a little bit as in, in terms of a magnitude of the matrix. So the magnitude of the product is just a product of the magnitudes. Uh, inverse of a matrix, we'll look at in a couple of videos down the line, the inverse of the determinant of the inverse is one over the determinant. That's nice. Identity matrices, which we discuss in the next video, the determinant of an identity matrix is one. Also, the determinant of unitary matrices, which we study later in this chapter, is one. The determinant of a transpose is equal to the same determinant of the matrix transpose is exchanging all of the off diagonal elements with their pair on the other side. Uh, multiplying by a scalar multiple, you can see that every value on the diagonal is going to be multiplied by alpha. So you get alpha to the n times the determinant of our original matrix. Because every single value is going to have an alpha in front of it, so you have n alphas in every term. All right, if we have some diagonal matrix, a matrix that only has non-zero values along the diagonal, every off diagonal element is equal to zero, the determinant of that is just going to be the product of the diagonal because every other permutation of the columns will have at least one number along the diagonal that will be equal to zero. So the only non-zero term is the original product of all the diagonal elements. And lastly, for a matrix which it has the properties of being what we'll later define as Hermitian. Hermitian matrices, their determinant is equal to a product of all of their eigenvalues, which we'll discuss in the coming videos exactly why these are true and what the consequences of these are going to be.